Dak Prescott is playing at an MVP level, in my opinion. And I, I, I trust Dak right now more than uh, Josh Allen. Now, somebody that would disagree with me there is a former MVP himself, and that is Cam Newton. Cam Newton has a podcast, and he had some interesting comments regarding Dak Prescott and a couple other quarterbacks in the league, and I'd like, I'd like to hear your thoughts on it as it relates to the situation here. Jackson, obviously Patrick Mahomes, Dak Prescott, Brack Parody, like, but Brock, let's, they're not winning because of him. He's not turning the ball over. He's managing the game. And if we were to put that in its own right as game managers, Brock, Parody, Tua Tonga Valoa, Jared Goff, and really Dak Prescott. Mm. These are game managers. They're, they're not difference makers. And when you say game manager, I'm not asking you to go out and win the game. I'm just asking you not to lose. Not to lose the game. That's, listen, motherfucker, I don't give a damn what you do. You don't have to score every time. You just don't have to throw a pick every time either. If we're going to really call a spade a spade, a game manager is different than a game changer. Thoughts? Uh, game changer whose last full season was in New England in 2020, where he threw eight touchdowns and 10 interceptions. You know what? I'm I'm very happy that you saw it the exact same way. I can't if this was coming from anybody else. I think that there's a the, the, there might be like an argument of like, OK, they might they might have something there that they're talking about. But, you know, with Cam Newton, he was great, but, you know, he's comparing these guys to himself. And he's probably comparing them to himself currently, what he views himself as right now. Right. And he views himself as that, you know, MVP caliber season, like in the like the 2015 season when he's threw for 35 touchdowns and only 10 interceptions. You know, he was really stellar with the with the Panthers. But there's you look at the list of the just the pa- the passing leaders right now. And Reed, you let me know who you're taking. Are you taking Cam over Tua? No. Are you taking Cam over CJ? Are we talking about prime Cam or current Cam? Now, because he, he thinks he can still play, yeah, we're taking Cam have, now. Are no. you taking Cam now or CJ now? No, CJ. Cam or Brock? Brock. Like you said, you don't have – what's it – you want to call a spade a spade, but you're splitting hairs. Like, is 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 a win any less more impactful because the quarterback isn't putting everything on his shoulders rather than being a facilitator like a John Stockton type and just getting the ball to his – to his teammates it's not his fault that he has so much talent around him he's doing his job are you taking cam over dak no i'm taking, are you dak. taking cam over jared goff that one's a little closer I'm that one might be a little closer off. just based off of but i think that decision is more inflated based off of jared's past than what he's actually doing right now because i mean if you right. look at him right now he's thrown for almost 3500 yards 21 touchdowns and 10 interceptions i think his his rating is like 95 or so but in this one, it's an obvious choice. Are you going to take Cam over Sam Howell? No, I'm taking Sam Howell. Like, and, and that's only in the top six. I mean, you're not taking Cam over Josh Allen. You're not taking Cam over Patrick Mahomes. You're not taking him over Trevor Lawrence. You're not taking him over Jalen Hurts, Justin Herbert, maybe Jordan Love, maybe. But, I mean, there's honestly a name. The only person's name that I would take Cam at this point, right now, just a shot in the dark, let's see what you got over a starting quarterback, it's probably Gardner Minshew. And he's only coming in at like 19, 20. Like he's yeah. like a, and he's only a starter because that's the only choice they got. Same now thing with Josh Dobbs. I mean, the only reason he's there is because Kirk's hurt, but I'm not taking Cam over Kirk. But let's think, let's think, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to take this a, a layer deeper though. Okay. So take MVP Cam, which what, which I do believe was a game changer as he's talking about. I, I believe he meets that 2015 Cam meets that definition that he's discussing of a game changer of somebody who, like, you could not stop Prime Cam in that year. Like, he was doing everything. Now, would you take that MVP Cam over any of the current MVP candidates? Would you take him over Dak Prescott this year to lead? If you had the Cowboys situation, would you put 2015 Cam in over Dak Prescott? Ooh. That's a good one. Right. But I also feel like that decision, I probably would go with Cam because of my personal feelings about Dak. Okay. So, okay. So San Francisco, Brock Purdy's currently the leading 
MVP front runner right now. And there's arguments all the time about what Brock Purdy is. Would you take MVP Cam Newton in the San Francisco, this 49ers team, or Brock Purdy? Brock. Really? I'm taking Brock because Brock is exactly who the Niners need him to be. He just needs to be a facilitator and get the ball around. I think Cam would play too much selfish ball and try to do too much, and he's going to squander kind of the talent around him at that point. So, do you view do you view the title game manager as a bad title or a good or? Because I brought this up to Emily since to Emily Sissel of Emily Sissel asks what if, okay. and she said with game manager she's learned you know football more and more over the years and game manager hit her and she was like isn't that exactly what a quarterback is is a game manager isn't that their job description right i thought about it i was like you know what yeah it's always been viewed as like a bad thing with these quarterbacks but like alex smith when he was with the chiefs perfect he was a perfect like perfect example of it and i think what you're saying with brock purdy is true like he fits he fits exactly what kyle shanahan has been looking for for years with that 49ers offense, when we when we said the evolutions, it started with, uh, you know, I think C.J. Beathard, who then evolved into uh, <laughs> into Nick Mullins, who then evolved into Jimmy Garoppolo, who then his final form, I think, is now Brock Purdy. I think he's what he's been looking for is somebody who can he's got the skill level to dissect it, but also the mentality. And that's one thing with Cam is Cam's decision making. Over time, I'm not I I wouldn't put anywhere in like the top tier of elite quarterback decision making. No, because they even had to do that when he first got into the NFL because he didn't know how to read a defense at Auburn because he just relied on his legs a lot. And he just had that big arm to get it out to whatever wide receiver is down the field. They had to make that offense so cookie cutter and kind of like develop his reading like, OK, let's just focus on just one side of the field. Don't even look left. Just look right. Here's your two or three reads. Go through your progressions and keep moving. But as somebody who is more versed in college football, you saw Brock being the facilitator game manager at Iowa State. He was always talented. If anybody watched college football, they saw that coming out. So with him being Mr. Irrelevant was kind of a slap in the face to his talent. I think he just got there because he's an undersized quarterback at the end of the day. But what he's doing right now in the NFL should come to no surprise who actually watched him in college football. I will say this, following on our game of good move or bad move, bad move by Cam Newton on that outfit. That was a, that was a, that was a fan. And you want to talk about uh, a, a team that had talent on that MVP season for Cam Newton. You got to remember that's when Jonathan Stewart's going out there rushing for almost a thousand yards that season. You had Ted Ginn Jr. on there. You had Greg Olson going for over 1,100 yards receiving that year. I mean, you had Michael Orr. He was playing for them. You had Ryan Khalil, who was probably going to go down as one of the greatest centers in all of football history with how just consistent he was. But I mean, look at the defense. You had Jared Allen, Luke Keekley, Josh Norman, prime Josh Norman was yeah. on there. Roman Harper. I mean, that defense is just as stacked, if not a little bit, probably edge out a little bit more than the Niners defense. So, okay, you're just splitting hairs. He's just salty that nobody wants him. Why don't they want me, man? Giving us a good Will Smith impression. Why don't they want me, man? Why don't Jada want me, man? Why don't Jada? <laughs> Keep my... Oh. Where's the sound? <laughs> well, I can, oh, okay. And I'm looking at this list, and like I'm still like, I'm not counting Gardner Minshew or Josh Dobbs as a starter because they're obviously the backups. But the his name keeps getting pushed further and further down. I probably would take him over Zach Wilson. I would take him over Mac Jones and Kenny Pickett. Would you take him over Justin Fields at this point? At this point, no. Cam I, now I, and Justin no, Fields now. No, no. I, I would try. I would go with Fields as potential more. That's the, that's the case with a lot of them. I would go with the potential more than what Cam has right now. Obviously, that shoulder is shot. Like he showed that in New England, he could not get the, the ball downfield like he used to, and he couldn't. You know, he could. He, he's. It's the thing that so many athletes, like great athletes, like Heisman winners, you know, turned MVPs, like can't get through the head when that decline starts, when that step back happens where they can't, you know, they can't process it correctly. So nothing looks good to him compared to when he had that. So 
I, 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 I see his anger and his resentment where he is probably, I would take him over probably several backups in the NFL. And I would take him as a backup if he didn't have the Cam Newton isms, if he didn't have the personality of it, because you don't want your backup quarterback to have the Cam Newton superstar personality. You don't want them to have any type of superstar personality. You want them to be quiet and holding a clipboard. That's not what Cam can do. Cam's going to show up wearing that stupid fucking hat and take and just you you, you don't you you don't know what to do with them. So well, and even not even drawing comparison to current starting quarterbacks or even quarterbacks are even on the roster, but like put this in comparison to some of the free agent names that are still out there. Matt Ryan, are you going to take Matt Ryan or if you need to sign a quarterback today, are you going to take Matt Ryan or Cam Newton? I'm going to take Cam Newton in that one. Ooh. I would take Cam Newton on that one. I don't think I, I don't think Matt Ryan. I think Matt Ryan's got less than Cam does. What about Cam or or uh, Super Bowl winning Nick Foles? Cam, I'm going to wow. take Cam on that one too. Wow. What about Colt? You going to take Colt McCoy over Cam? No, I'm going to take Cam Newton. Wow. I got ex- I've got too much experience with Colt McCoy. I'm good on that. Uh, yeah, never mind. I asked <laughs> the wrong person that one. <laughs> Look, man, I'm, it's look when it comes to when it get when it gets down that low, I'm I'm going with the culture. Rise up, baby. Maybe not that culture. <laughs>